This is a podcast with David Moreno on GFeed, a G module production. Los Angeles born artist David Moreno lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. His works have been exhibited in prestigious galleries, institutions, and biennales around the world since the late 1980s. David was an important part of the legendary gallery Feature Inc., founded and directed by the late gallerist known as Hudson. David had 10 exhibitions with the gallery and continues to exhibit at his own rhythm today. Hi, David. Thanks for being our very first guest for our regular podcast. I am very happy to resurface Stereomo with a video document showing it in action on our website, gmodule.com. Hi, Jeff. Thank you. Um, so Stereomo was first uh, developed, created in 2000. And it consists of two 8-inch woofers, which are the bass response speakers of your typical speaker cabinet. And these elements are mounted to a six-foot steel rod, flexible rod, that is then mounted to the floor. And after about a month or two of experimentation with sounds, I managed to come up with a, a very specific sound that... Um, force the speakers to start moving in a back and forth kind of metronomic motion. And uh, so there's two of these and they're the way they are now, they're moving in unison together. Um, it almost feels magical. I mean, I remember very clearly at PS1 MoMA when I saw Stereomo at Greater New York uh, back in 2005, and that's when, that's the year that it was exhibited. I was just as captivated as when I saw uh, an ocean drawing by Vija Selmans, for example. I experienced a kind of a meditation on time. Yeah, the when you see them in person, because of the scale, they're, like I mentioned, the rods are six foot high, so they're kind of a human scale, and they're placed apart, sort of filling near the corners of a room, sort of filling the room, and they're moving in unison, and I think it uh, it kind of I've had people say that you know they because of the physical motion it's kind of very captivating, and there's a mystery to why they're moving. It's not apparent because there's no um, mechanical like motor or anything making these move. It's just actually sound frequencies. Yeah, that's a really that's a really fascinating process that you've developed. I mean. Um... You know, there's the uh, from what we can tell on 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 hearing these works is uh, there are a series of audible blips and oscillating drones and bleeps. And um, when I when I was in the room, it just took me away from everything else. Yeah, there's the there's the sound that makes them move, but then of course I can mix over the top of that any number of uh, musical. Com uh, compositions that actually relate to the tempo of the motion. So in that installation, there was a about an hour long CD that with a composition composition that changed over time, uh, and that repeated every hour or so. Yes, you actually have experimented a lot with sound and music. Can you <clears throat> just tell us a, about a few projects that you've done otherwise? Um, yeah, well, I started recording in the, the early 80s with analog equipment, and it became kind of a parallel activity with my visual work. And then over time, of course, they started influencing each other. My visual work became more focused on visual, and my visual work became more focused on uh, audio, and the audio became more focused on visual things. So I've done a number of pieces that were inspired by bringing the idea of sound into the visual realm. Absolutely. Not only have you created um, sound into the visual realm via um, sculpture or installation, but also you have done um, astonishing drawings that seemingly have a sense of vibration in them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that when you're working with sound and um, it's kind of it's you it's a very physical and 
tactile medium, and so it's it's uh, great to express it visually as well. Absolutely. In this day and age, um, we're in a world of digital media. It's clear, right? Um, right. Every possibility can can be generated by an application, a software, high tech solutions. So you know, it's it's great to see somebody who's working with the simplicity of frequency, of decibels, of rhythm and repetition that augment visual perception as well. So th these are things that are found in Stereomo. And you created that work at the turn of the millennium. You know, today, it's for me, it still stands. Um, how do you see this piece functioning now in an installation, a public installation? Um, how would you visualize it now, in at present? Mm -hmm. So it's been in this um, form of just two speakers, stereo speakers, but obviously there's potential to have many more speakers in a space. Um, and so it could be a, like a field of motion within the, a space. It could be eight to 12 speaker elements moving. The motion could be, in a way, choreographed. The motions could be changing. The sounds could be changing. So it could be much more complex and immersive kind of installation with more speakers. It's almost like an, an, an enhanced meditative chamber that you could create or a meditative space. It's almost like right. a, a virtual reality without it being at all virtual. It's actually you're creating a reality. <laughs> Yeah. Well, David, listen, um, thank you so much for this great conversation. And um, we look forward to sharing um, Stereomo, which, by the way, is short for Stereo in Motion. And David Moreno has coined that term. Um, and we're very happy to have feature, featured it on g-module.com. Thanks, David. Thank you, Jeff.